Well, here we are. Another month, another security flaw in Intel processors. <laughs> I actually laughed when I saw this. I was like, <laughs> because of how unsurprised I am that this keeps happening. Uh, you know, they say a definition of insanity is expecting a different outcome to the same repeated action over and over. And people who act surprised, you know, it's like I've said in that Broken Silicon episode with the server engineer. It's like at this point, you have to assume there's going to be more flaws and there's going to be another one after that. And at what point does, you know, is the camel's back broken and you just go, oh, my God, there's going to be 100 more. And I think that's going to be Netcat. Netcat is the new security flaw. But what is Netcat? Well, it stands for Network Cache Attack. That's where this name comes from. And to really convey how severe this is, I have to explain DataDirect IO, DDIO to you real quickly. So what is DDIO? DataDirect IO is a performance enhancing technology uh, added to recent Intel server grade processors. Instead of reading and writing from slower memory, it allows you to basically take a shortcut to fast level cache. And of course, why would you do that? To increase performance. But already you can probably start to see what that means people can do, right? This shortcut can be exploited. It's possible to discern someone's password as they type it into a terminal over the network by exploiting an interesting side channel vulnerability. So basically, what snoopers can do is log in from another server, don't even need to be on the same one, and by timing how people do key presses because, you know, your hands drift side to side at different rates to go to different buttons, they can figure out what your password is. You can log in from an outside server and take people's passwords. And well, Intel, of course, at first is downplaying it and saying, oh, this is almost impossible to do in practice. From my early talks with people who work in the server industry, I am told that quite possibly the only way to be sure this can't be exploited is to turn off virtualization. So that's right. Intel chips are still great as long as you turn off hyperthreading and virtualization. <laughs> Side channel. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> each other under the bus. The obliviousness to how bad this looks, all of these flaws adding up while Intel sits there and laughs is very concerning. This is why I made that recent video, why I'm still worried about Intel. It doesn't matter that they're firing on all cylinders. It's still clear that they are a crumbling empire right now. And the things that you need to turn that around, complete awareness of your problems, admitting your mistakes, and a top to bottom acceptance of the struggle that's ahead for everyone in the company just isn't there. Most people at Intel seem to get it, but a lot of people in charge don't, and it's adding up. How bad is this? Here are some direct quotes from one of my main contacts, right? At this point, I can honestly say it is absolutely suicide to put any device firewall or server directly on the internet or any hostile or untrusted network. I need to replace my servers this year. That sounds pretty serious to me. That sounds like they shouldn't be laughing or downplaying it. But I don't know. I, I don't know what's next, I, and we'll just have to see how bad this gets. But this is what happens. When you let an architecture rot for 10 years, when you let it rust to the point that hackers have a decade to find every little exploit in your architecture and you haven't been doing work in the background to update possible errors with every successive generation. My God, this is getting ridiculous. I'll likely be doing a follow-up video uh, on as I get more information, but I wanted to get it out to you guys right away. This vulnerability, despite what, of course, Intel is saying, could be worse than all the other ones. They just keep getting worse, and they keep adding up. Turn off hyper-threading, turn off virtualization, and I guess you'll still get that great single-core performance, or single-thread performance. It's not even single-core anymore. Single-thread performance of Intel. Hope it's worth it.
Well, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it, like it. Please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can get an exclusive Die Shrink podcast and early ad-free access to Broken Silicon. And, of course, the Discord, where we're discussing all of these things after videos and throughout the day. Thank you, everybody. (laughs) 